I am Jonas H. Dempsey, and I'm joined here by Mark Germain. Morning, morning. We're at the Puma Vida 2023 uh, retreat in mm. Costa Rica. We just had a wonderful couple of weeks uh, hanging out. And yeah, very nice. Getting to know each other. Um, and I've been a huge fan of, of Mark's online. Uh, some of you may know him from, from various groups. Uh, he's made a lot of the graphics that um, he passed along. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's just, um, you know, I had a lot of expectations, and they were all exceeded. I mean, which is hard for, to do. I mean, you're a fifth line, you know. Well, I mean, you know, expectations could be the devil. You know? they, they always seem to often uh, not meet up that projected belief of what we expect something should be, and then sometimes they do happen, sometimes they don't. But you know, that's the way it goes. So I, I'm glad we met uh, in in Aura and. I always enjoy talking to you. You're a very uh, articulate, intelligent person who has a plethora of knowledge that I've been listening to. So I, I appreciate, I really appreciate that from you. And uh, having little dialogues and uh, fun banter and having fun, um, you know, joking around and stuff like that. Usually me joking, you're, you're around. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. That's, that's okay. It's, it's got to be two to play. Recording. You gotta say hi now. You can't not say hi. Come say hi. Yeah, now. Come say hi. Come on. We're Maybe recording. Just yeah, yeah. gonna say hi for a minute. This is Lorena. Hi. Hi. Lorena. She's been <laughs> not Bobby. That's a different one. The other so, five. Sonia. This is Johnny. <laughs> yeah, five for John. Yeah, I'm just getting into my inner flow right now. So, um, <laughs> he's just waking up. What is this? What is this? Is this? Oh, wow. There's these. nothing else. Mm -hmm. Only nice. this is now. <laughs> well, nothing to know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank See, you. there's there's not much uh, privacy around here, so you got to yeah. get used to life uh, bumping into you, literally. <laughs> you know, and as a third line being, that happens often. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. As well as walls and other things that stick out or not. Yeah. Uh. Well, it's been uh, it's been such a fun time, and you know, I've uh, since the moment I met Mark, I thought I really want to, you know, I, I really want to pick his brain. I want to interview him, uh, but you know, this will have to be a preamble because you know, there's so much I I wanted to ask and go into. And uh, yeah, I thought he was going to get a scalpel out and look at my brain <laughs> and see what I can find there, but no, we're just going to stick to the surface. Yeah, I go, I go too deep. So, you know, I don't have um, 63, I'm not a big questioner, but I asked a couple of people over coffee this morning, what should we ask Mark? And here's what we came up with. All right. When people are getting into human design, what do most people get stuck with? Well, um, first, people come to human design all different ways, different reasons. Um, I like that. Yeah, now we got the groove in the background. We're working it. Work it. <clears throat> Sonia's got the tunes going. <laughs> bum, bum. And now she's got it down. Oh. We're at the top of a hill. Yeah, y'all you, you can't see. Uh, but we're at the top of a hill, and it's this like narrow little. I mean, that's a real. You know, she has an undefined spleen, so she fearlessly bounds up the hill in her car. Yes. Um, so. You know, back to the question is, um, everyone's different. You know, even their weight there is different. Um, and sometimes the hardest thing is, is because you have a life that you've lived for so many years as what you thought was your life, what you thought was correct for you. Um, but dealing with all these challenges and issues in the world and somewhere knowing that it's not quite right, though, there's something else. And some of the biggest challenges is that this is a very solitary experience in terms of um, really needing to be selfish in the sense of um, you need to take care of yourself, to get yourself alone. And, and it's very different. In the, and human design is very different in the way it looks at life, which makes that sometimes challenging for our loved ones in our life. Right, our family, our friends, or you know, whether we have a spouse or a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever it may be, that's what's challenging because, you know, they're not always, you know, not everyone's here 
necessarily to have this path in life where they uh, get to really fully embrace the mechanics of human design. And that can be challenging to other people. You know, um, I know it was for me. I know it was for many other people. Uh, probably for you also. Um, it's just something that uh, is difficult. Because, you know, depending on the type, like I'm a 3-5 splenic projector, being a projector is very different than what the world expects from someone like myself normally. You know, uh, someone who's here to work, 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 you know, make shit happen. You know, all these mantras that we have in the, um, <clears throat> out there in society um, just are not really aligned for me. Mm -hmm. I operate way differently. So just do, do it. it. Yeah, just do it. It's not, you yeah. know, just do it, you know, makes do do. <laughs> you know, when it's just do do it because that's what happens because it really, a lot of stuff turns to shit. Um, and people don't understand why. Why is because you're very different. You have a unique design and you've been conditioned to be something you're not all your life. Although there's still aspects that may come through, so when someone shows you your chart and you sign, you resonate with it, and you're like, yes. But you know what you're really resonating with is all the not-self stuff, all the conditioning, you know? So that that is really a, a challenge for people, the loved ones, the friends, and really embracing their work. You know, the way they look at life, it's just, it could be turned upside down. I mean, if I, if I were a black magician, you know, I would just uh, read the not-self as the self and probably make a lot more money doing that, you know. Well, you could, and, you know, and, yeah. and, and people do, but, you know, sometimes <clears throat> whatever way you can, you know, as long as the goal is to sometimes get to the, uh, the other side, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It could be an introduction to something else. Um, but people, uh, I, you know, Everybody who's ever watching this and has been introduced to human design or is going to be, you know, just or has been, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I'm 17 years in and it still has its challenges, but there's this ease and grace in, in the way my mind works that helps it better. Doesn't mean my not self doesn't show up every now and then, it certainly does, because uh, that never goes away. That's an important thing to remember. But you can see it for what it is. You don't have to let it own you permanently. It's maybe in the moment, so there it is. It's doing its stuff. But that's um, that's not the long-term uh, process that ends up uh, being, uh, you know, the majority of the time. What happens is you become more yourself over time. You get more refined over time. You see things clearer over time. And the first seven years um, is the most challenging process. Maybe the first three and a half years of those seven years is the most challenging process. Because that's when you're really fighting everything. Your mind, your mind's grip that wants to hold on to the way it wants to lead your life instead of your inner authority or your authority um, guiding you to what's correct in life. Um, and it's not like you really have a choice in any of this. It's just, are you going to fight your way? Is, is your life fighting its way through, or are you having more ease and grace? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful summary. Yeah, so many people kind of want the ease and grace, and they want to get the ease and grace through, you know, my mind chooses to not care about this. Yeah. Well, good luck, you know, um, it's kind of like... Uh, I think it was the great, uh, the great mystic Ibn Sina, and he said, for those of you who believe true and false are the same, let me set you on fire, and you can tell me if you are truly on fire or not. <laughs> you know, because, yeah. because the mind can't choose these things, you know, and people who kind of say, oh, it's all a choice, it's a choice to, they said, no, no, I mean, choicelessness. That's, no, that's I, what I, everybody I, wants to hear. Yeah, I, I knew that before I was introduced to human design, and only... Human designs only entrench that belief. It's not a belief, actually. It's that reality. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> see, those are words that we say uh, because that's the collective, how it imposes its, its uh, language 
and then we're trying to use language that's very different and still connect to the true essence. It's not a choice. Um, either, either you're living life through the lens of correctness or incorrectness. And you either see it one way or the other. And seeing it through the lens of correctness is much nicer than the opposite. <laughs> it's the choice to believe or to be alive. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Um, it yeah. isn't a belief because it's based in mechanics that you can test and see for yourself. Or you can see the results of it, I should really say. You can see the results if you entered something correctly versus when you enter something incorrectly, right? So that's a different result, right? Absolutely. It's, it's a totally different thing. You know, for a projector like myself, either it was successful or there was bitterness, resentment, something wasn't fair, it just wasn't right. There's a lot of resentment or bitterness in that sense that you can feel. But when it's success, and success in the truest intrinsic sense, where it's this energy flow within you, that something was done correctly, that's, that's really what it's about, that feeling, that sense that you have. Um, it's truly amazing. And for a generator, which most people are in the world, about 70%, you know, it's that satisfaction. Right, like you, you're a generator. You know, what do you, what do you rather live in? The not-self of the frustration that is there or or the, the satisfying life? Right? I mean, and I'll, I'll tell you that it is a cellular change where it's not just personal. Being around Mark, it's like, I can just say, I mean, you know, at, at first, you know, you're in Penta, people are around, you kind of have to get to know each other, but um, it just feels, there's, sometimes there's this despair, I think anybody gets it, it's like a despair of the spirit, of like, is this right, what am I doing, where do I go, something, I mean, I'm not, and obviously every projector is going to have a different life force and a different makeup and what they give to others, and, and obviously every part of it's the outer authority, but even without talking, Mark gives off this vibe, at least to me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And it's almost like it's going to be okay because whatever is stuck can get unstuck. You might not know how to do it. I might not know how to do it. But somebody does somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. He gives me faith that somebody knows what's going on. Well, you, <laughs> you know, know, you know, it's it's funny. As, you know, as a projector, projectors are here for the other. Mm -hmm. So it's always better for me giving to the other than it is about my own stuff. Right, right. And my own stuff's a lot harder than... Than yeah. helping guide other people. And I was know? so curious, and we kind of scratched off a couple of the Mark questions because you're like, no, 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 what can we come on? Let's no, you know, it's so, you know yeah. the one thing, you know, when the one thing that is so important is that, you know, it's a, it takes time also. This is a process, this is not an overnight thing. I remember when I, I have an undefined route, which means. I could be susceptible to the pressures of the world and really want to hurry things up. And when I first got the human design, it was also into theta healing, which helps deal with clearing and altering belief systems. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll uh, believe this thing away and I'll, <laughs> grab, I'll turn that seven years in a much shorter time to, de yeah. to, to decondition. Yeah. You know, it's a joke though, the irony of life, life is full of irony, is the process. You know, when you're a conditioned adult, the gift is in that process of deconditioning. You get to see how it unfolds and how you become more yourself over time. It's like, and it's also a blessing being a conditioned adult and finding human design. It's like, um, there's that contrast. So you can really appreciate when you are living correctly. And you, and, and you enter something correctly, and it, and it ends in your signature, either success, or satisfaction, or peace for a manifester, or wonder, wonderment, and surprise for a reflector, um, whatever that is, that's, that's what it's, you see the difference, the distinctions, and you can appreciate it. Now I'm what's called a 3 5, right, in the profile. So my life is about discovery, it's, it's not an easy life. It's a lot of bumps in the road, and you got to learn from it and discover what doesn't work. Well, I've discovered a lot of that. 
mm -hmm. like, you know, write uh, chapters and books on just what doesn't work. Um, but it instantly does work. And what does work, going back earlier, is the mechanics. That's what you can see working. That's what you can rely upon. You know, well, how do we know they're, you know, Bob said, don't believe me, you know, test them yourself, right? He loves three times. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta see the proof is in the pudding. And that's why I also think he just said that because he knew, he knew the mechanics. It's the best mechanic there ever will be, ever will be. Mm -hmm. And he knew they, they just worked. You know, he said, yeah, sure, try it out. It's like a, like it was this nebulous question, like, will it work for you or not? But it, 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 he knows the mechanics work. Mm -hmm. I know the mechanics work. Other people know the mechanics work. Something comforting to me, um, you know, I, 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 at various times in my life, tried to be a champion of truth from moral superiority and all this crap. And, uh, you know, there's this uh, quote from St. Augustine who said, the truth is a lion. Set it free, it can fend for itself. And anytime I'm like, no, 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 you gotta do this, you're not so, you're this, anytime I start pointing fingers, I go, wait a minute, what, what's my job to point fingers? I mean, I'm just perpetuating the very thing I'm, you know. It happens. Irony. Life it is, happens. You know, I've done it myself. Yeah. <laughs> you get in, you know, this is situation, you get in a situation with a particular environment, with particular people, mm -hmm. and things come out of you that you have no choice in. It's just mechanics. And that's why there's no blame or shame in that. In the end, even if you get heated in the moment, when you have time passes and you reflect on it, you can see the truth in that. There is no blame. There is no shame. No one's wrong. No one's right. No one's better. No one's worse. You know, the mechanics are just mechanics. And there's no morality in that. There's no better or worse. There's no right or wrong. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the beautiful things about really understanding human design and its truth is that um, you have your life, the other person has theirs, you know, and you can respect that along the way. Uh, you can, even in the moments when you can't, even in the moments when it might be hard, even in the moments when you can't see, it. you know, time passes and you can see. It. Yeah, it happens. I have a friend, uh, Perry M.G., he likes to say, and he is an M.G. His name is M.G., E-M-G-E, and he's a manifesting generator, you know. But uh, he has a great, uh, a great quote. He's an emotional manifesting generator. And he likes to say, people take time to come into focus. And I mean, that, I mean, sometimes some, some people take longer than others. We take time to come into focus. I mean, it's, well, that's... Uh, that's a life process, especially as a conditioned adult meeting human design. <clears throat> it's a refinement process over time. And there's seven-year cycles. The first seven years are the most challenging. The second seven, you know, at the end of the first seven, I, I, I mentioned to you the other day, it's like, um, it's really like the beginning point of really starting your, your, your life as yourself. You know, because that's seven years, those first seven years in your experiment, are really getting rid of a lot of baggage. And it's not like they, it all goes away either. Um, there's still things that are there. And life is always interacting with you. So there's always more stuff. There's new baggage coming there's in. There's new stuff. Hopefully you don't take like it that, as much. Yeah, you don't take as much and you know how to deal with it. You see it for what it is. Uh, you don't make it personal. That's one thing about human design is a pure joy is that the non-self takes everything personal. When you're being yourself and you see the mechanics, nothing's personal. There's no choice. There's no personal, nothing personal in nature about it, even though it can feel very, very personal. You know, the not self is the one that also gets very offended, it takes life very serious. So if you're very serious, you're taking life, you know, you're, 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 and you're and very serious about life and, uh, that's something that's just, you know, you can let go of the time. I'm a gate 46, so, um, you know, I know, um, and I, I appreciate other people's keynoting because it's just another view of it. Richard Rudd uh, keynotes the shadow, as he calls it, of 46. Uh, 
seriousness. And I think anyone can be serious. Um, but, you know, 46s have a special relationship to seriousness, which is kind of like uh, the, the mental trip. It kind of goes like, you don't take it as seriously as I do. Well, it's a gate of determination. So, you know, right? right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. you're, you're determined. And um, so that can be very serious. Now, there's a different serious in terms of taking something serious and just making life too serious. It's like you're not laughing at yourself. You're not laughing at life. Yeah, it's that's that. You know, there's a there's a distinction. You know, um, where and I close my eyes sometimes because that's where I can go deeper. So just in case anyone's wondering, <laughs> why is he closing his eyes? <laughs> um, now they're open. Now they're closed. Um, um, <clears throat> You know, the not-self is, is such a delicate uh, creature, in a sense. You know, again, easily offended, takes life serious, uh, you know, takes everything personal, makes everything personal. Because um, that's the conditioning, it's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. That's the way we've been conditioned to be. So when you, when you really do human design, and you're fully embraced in that process, of becoming yourself, all that stuff gets less and less. Less and less, every year. Every year that goes by, less and less. And it's wonderful. You become, you know, depending on your individual chart, it brings out different aspects. Uh, there's more clarity, more refinement in all these definitions that you have. Um, how you operate in the world becomes more refined. Become more yourself. And interact with life as yourself. I love this word refinement also because it's kind of people ask what what you're doing or and kind of your point earlier about it's actually a great gift to have the seven years. So many people wish they could do it in seven weeks or seven days. Oh, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. well then they're missing it and yes. it's kind of the refinement to me is kind of like how you're like Say what you will about Apple. You know, people don't like Apple products. It can be homogenized in ways. But, you know, Steve, Steve Jobs was a genius in a lot of ways. And one of his geniuses was to say, one of his genius things was to say, we are an iterative process. We're not going to plan too far without implementing. We're not going to implement too far without planning. In fact, what we're going to do is 1,400 iterations. And that's kind of, that's refinement. It's like, yeah, you don't get an, too far ahead. That's an analogy in the, in the world that you can use to... Describe a process that is an ongoing one, lifelong one. I, I will not be stopping my refining process anytime soon until the day I, I pass away, whatever day that may be. But that it's it, it's a lifelong process. Um, I'm also a lifelong learner, you know. So I, I and learning is really about yourself. I mean, and when you really learn about yourself, then you can really learn how you interact with the world. And how the world interacts with you. And then you can see how all these things unfold and why they unfold the way they do. That's what's the gift of the parents are. It eliminates the make-believe reasons we make up in our head as to why things happen. There's a lot of make-believe here. Yeah, I no longer have to say it's because of my job or because of my this. Or I can no. just say, uh, checks out. Day two, lifelong, or whatever. Or yeah, day whatever. Two. There's, yeah. there's things in your life that you can yeah. put in the mechanics. And if you know the other person's chart, you can see where the dynamics are. Because when you and I, you have your design in your life, I have my design in my life. But when we come together in this aura, there's a third person here. And that has a particular dynamic. Yeah. All right? So that's that's what's important. Now we got the massage people coming through, <laughs> and I ain't got the massage, but this guy is. All right? Um, <laughs> But that's okay. He deserves. It. <laughs> Thank um, you. Well, I have a bunch more questions, but let's find a let's find a quieter place. I think this is a really wonderful ap appetizer. Yeah, this is, an this appetizer. is a good appetizer. Put this through some noise reduction. Hopefully, you can get out all of the what are these? What are we even listening to? I think we're, we got cicadas. Maybe? Any cicadas? Yeah. Some kind of insect. Let me tell you this this area. We got all kinds of noises coming around here. If you ever come to Costa Rica and you're near the jungle. You need uh, silicone earplugs, not the foam ones. They don't cut it. You got to get the ones you jam in there really nice and yeah. fill every crevice in your eardrum. 
because you need it. Other than that, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, it has been an absolute joy, and I hope we can uh, we can record a little more soon. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for putting out we'll, with all the noises. We'll, and, we'll do some other fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. We can think. Of we some. have to laugh. So if you don't laugh and laugh at ourselves, yeah. then then what you know? Then it's a sad thing. That's good. That's good. We're not laughing with high end. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with a good cry, but. It's and then we got this person taking a sneaky photo over here. She doesn't know that we could see her. The reflecting, the reflector who orbits around. I saw her in the reflection. There you go. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark. Ciao. Until next time.